graduates and guests, welcome to the University of Washington's 144th commencement ceremony, honoring the graduating class of 2019. Please welcome the university faculty led by the commencement marshals and the winners of the 2019 Awards of Excellence. candidates from the various doctoral and professional degrees. Carrying the gonfalons for the graduate school are Audrey Ragsack on the north and Jason Colt on the south. Audrey is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Biology. Jason is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Bioengineering. for the School of Pharmacy is Justin Fernando. Justin is receiving a Doctor of Pharmacy degree. On the south, carrying the gonfalon for the School of Law is Yumeng Sisi Bian. Sisi is receiving a Juris Doctor degree and a Master of Business Administration. Also on the north, carrying the gonfalon for the School of Dentistry are Bryce Plansich and Nea Uhuya. Both are graduating today with a Doctor of Dental Surgery. Candidates for various master's degrees are now entering the stadium. Carrying the gonfalons for the graduate school are Shada E. Salome on the north and lovely Francis Domingo on the south. Shada is receiving a Master of Laws. Lovely Francis is receiving a Master of Science in Information Management. Also on the north, carrying the gonfalon for the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance, Han Shen Shi and Carter Osborne. Both Han Shen and Carter are receiving their Masters of Public Administration.
graduates and guests. Candidates for the bachelor's degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences are now entering the stadium. Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Fine Arts, and Bachelor of Music candidates are on the north. Bachelor of Science and Biology candidates are also on the north. All other Bachelor of Science candidates enter on the south. Candidates receiving Bachelor of Science degrees are now entering from the South, led by Gonflanier Carly Orvik, who is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Neurobiology. On the North, carrying the Gonflan for the College of Arts and Sciences, is Madeline Renee Vatt, who is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in English, Creative Writing and Dance.
south side of the stadium. Please welcome bachelor's candidates from the College of Education, led by gonflanier Miriam Packard. Ms. Packard is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Learning Sciences, and Human Development. Candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences continue to enter on the north and south. Carrying the gonflon on the north is Christian Nault, who's receiving a Bachelor of Arts in American Indian Studies and Linguistics. candidates from the College of Engineering, led by gonflaniers Alexander Radcliffe and Tanika Pian Ratanasuko. Alexander is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering. Tanika is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering. Candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences continue to enter from the north, led by gonflanier Christelle Shalue, who is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Public Health, Global Health, and French.
Now entering on the south are bachelor's candidates from the College of the Environment. Carrying the gonfalon is Rachel Fricky, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Aquatic and Fishery Sciences. Bachelor candidates from the Information School are now entering the stadium on the south. The Information School Gonflon is carried by Gonflaneers Andrea Chen and Stephanie Bird. Andrea is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Informatics, Data Science. Stephanie is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Informatics, Human Computer Interaction. Candidates from the Michael G. Foster School of Business are now entering the stadium on the south, led by Gonflanier Zoraida Valdivinos. Zoraida is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration, Marketing. Candidates receiving Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences are now entering from the north, led by Gonflanier Reagan Gong, who is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Comparative Religion and a Bachelor of Science in Psychology.
bachelor's candidates from the School of Nursing and the School of Medicine are now entering the stadium on the south. The School of Nursing is led by gonfalonier Yuting Lin, who is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing. Carrying the gonfalon for the School of Medicine is Jason Ofadile, who is receiving a Doctor of Physical Therapy. College of Built Environments. They are led by gonfalonier Yun Lu, who is receiving a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture. Final groups of bachelor candidates entering the stadium on the south are from the School of Public Health and the School of Social Work. Carrying the gonfalon for the School of Public Health is Justin Matias, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Health Informatics and Health Information Management. The School of Social Work candidates are led by gonfalonier Michael Mugambe, who is receiving a Master of Social Work community-centered, interactive practice. On the north, carrying the gonfalon for the College of Arts and Sciences is Donya Derek Shani, who is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry.
graduates and guests. The members of the deans and president's parties are about to enter the stadium. Will all graduates please take their seats? Again, the members of the deans and presidents' parties are about to enter the stadium. Will all graduates please take their seats? And now, please turn your attention to the southwest corner of the stadium and welcome the procession of deans of the university's 16 schools and colleges, led by Deans Marshall, Jashana Schmidt.
academic procession concludes with the entrance to the stadium of the University of Washington Regents, President and Vice Presidents, led by University Marshal Associate Professor Joseph Jaynes of the Information School. Will all graduates please remain standing at your seats. Welcome to our beautiful campus. We'd like to begin the ceremony by acknowledging the land on which the university rests, the land of the Coast Salish peoples, which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Today, we celebrate together. The commencement exercises of the University of Washington will be opened with the presentation of the colors by the joint ROTC Color Guard and the singing of the Star Spangled Banner by Lauren Kalesa. Ms. Kalesa is graduating today with a Master of Music in Voice Performance. 
the audience will please rise. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to present to you the President of the University of Washington, Dr. Anamari Kause, who will preside over these exercises. What a beautiful day! Welcome to the 144th commencement ceremony of the University of Washington. Commencement ceremonies are an expression of academic traditions going back hundreds of years, and they symbolize some of the most fundamental values of our civilization, most particularly the pursuit of truth and the preservation of freedom. The splendid music you've been listening to during the processional, and which we will be hearing more of later in the program, is being provided for us this afternoon by students of the School of Music's Wind Ensemble under the direction of Professor Timothy Salzman. As you can tell, they're gifted musicians and we greatly appreciate their participation here today. Let's thank them. Now, these ceremonies are solemn, but they're also festive. As the name suggests, this isn't an end, but a commencement of new activities and challenges in the lives of our graduates. Just a few years ago, we welcomed you to the University of Washington Freshman Convocation, those of you that are undergraduates, in front of the same four columns that you see standing behind me. That's all that remains of the original university that opened in 1861. We told you then, that we'd see you again in front of these same columns when you graduated. 
That may seem like a lifetime ago, or maybe it seems like yesterday, maybe a little of both, but you are here. You made it. And I'm truly honored to be the first to formally congratulate the degree and award recipients and to welcome you to the ceremony. Now, the ultimate responsibility of the university lies with the members of our Board of Regents, 10 citizens of the state who are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the state senate. These dedicated men and women devote many hours each year to the welfare of the university. All 10 of our regents are here with us this afternoon, and I would like to introduce them at this time, but please hold your applause until they are all introduced. Dr. Constance W. Rice, the chair of the board. Joel Benalil, board vice chair. William S. Eyre. Joanne Harrell. Jeremy Jake. Libby G. McPhee. Rogelio Riojas. Blaine Tamaki. David Zeke. And Caitlin Zhao, the student member of the board. Please recognize our board of regents. And you may sit. We also have seated on the platform this afternoon the chief academic and administrative officers of the university, the vice presidents, the vice provost, the deans of the schools and colleges, and our special guest, Dr. Sheila Edwards Lang, UW alum and president of Seattle Central College, who you'll meet later. Finally, I'd like to introduce the president of our Alumni Association, Daniel Hugh Weller. The Alumni Association has been keeping over 479,000 members of the Husky alumni family connected with each other and with the university for more than 125 years. I hope that all of you will join. Now I'd like to introduce our Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Mark Richards, who will present to you our amazing faculty and this year's University Award winners. Provost Richards. Thank you, President Kause. A great number of faculty and staff members are here today to witness the conferring of your degrees. You've already met one of them, our University Marshal Joe Jaynes, who is also the acting chair of the Faculty Senate. You may also know many of the professors, lecturers, and mentors, both faculty and staff, who are serving as commencement and college marshals. You may not realize it, but they look forward to celebrating this day just like you. I must say I've been looking forward to it too. I joined the university only a year ago but I have seen the magic that happens when you bring together great teachers and researchers and a brilliant and engaged student body. And that magic happens every day. You have made it happen, and you have every reason to be very proud of what you have accomplished. I have the pleasure today of introducing several recipients of the university's 2019 Awards of Excellence. The Awards of Excellence recognize individuals whose mentorship and service have made a profound impact upon the lives of students and the broader university community. You can read all about this year's award winners in your commencement program, but I'd like to recognize in particular those who have joined us on the stage today. They are Sarah Stroop, Amanda Swar, Kira Shabram, Jose Guzman, Jennifer Doherty, Jeffrey Buenaflor, Connie Kravis, Shak Young E, Laura Harrington, and Daryl Owens. Now, I'd like all our award winners, faculty, staff, and marshals, both those on stage and those on the field, to stand and receive our many thanks for your dedication and service to the university and to the class of 2019.
Thank you, Provost Richards. Now, before I continue, there's one more group we must thank. I'd like to thank all the mothers, fathers, family members, and all the supporters of our graduates who are out here today. You have been so instrumental in helping each of our graduates achieve the tremendous distinction they will be awarded today. Thank you for your support, and your Huskies too. Now, I want to take a moment to address our graduates. I want you to take a moment right now and savor that word, graduates. Think back over your University of Washington experience, and before that, to the community college or high school that prepared you to get here. Consider the enormous investment you've made in yourself, measured in years of effort, hours of concentration, in sacrifices and deferred rewards. Remember those moments that challenged you, that frustrated you. Admit it, there was a few of those. Maybe even made you wonder if you were on the right path. Well, if you still have any doubt, today is your answer. And we're here to celebrate you. Whether you're collecting your bachelor's, your master's, a professional degree, or your PhD, your accomplishments fill all of us at the university with pride. You are the mission of this great public university, and we're here to cheer for you. With your degree, you've equipped yourself with the knowledge, skills, and credentials to open countless doors. And I know that you're already stepping through those doors. So many of you have gone beyond the classroom to take internships, study abroad, conduct research. You've engaged in advocacy and activism. You've helped your families and served your communities long before you graduated. I also want you to know that if you're still seeking your path, you have plenty of time and runway to find the right one. Again, this is commencement. But whatever you decide to do next, to paraphrase President John F. Kennedy, I hope you'll ask not only what your next opportunity can do for you, but what it will enable you to do for the world. I don't think I have to tell you, because you tell me. We face real and significant challenges. But I'm not exaggerating when I say you are the best hope that we have to meet them. The collective talent, drive, and desire in this stadium is overwhelming. The potential to tackle any issue, from climate change to poverty to every type of inequity that exists, is within you. Celebrating your achievement and graduating is also partly about celebrating what comes next. And I'm, all of us, are waiting eagerly to see how you will launch and the beauty of your trajectories. Whatever you do, wherever you go, I hope you will take with you all the values that are the bedrock of this university. Remember, there's no substitute for treating people with kindness and respect, and that you are also a person deserving respect and empathy, not only from others, but from yourself. Never forget that it's good to ask for help, and that it's also good to provide help when it's asked of you. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank you for all that you've brought to the University of Washington in your time here. Your curiosity, ideas, and involvement have all been gifts to this university which I cherish, which we cherish. A part of you will be here forever, and I hope you will keep in touch with that part and remember that your university is always here for you wherever your journey takes you. Congratulations, class of 2019. Now, there's just one more thing to do. I really want to get a last photo with the class of 2019.
So I would like all of you to look up to the top of the big screen behind me. I'm going to turn around and face it too. We all are. And everybody get ready to smile for our photographers. Let the countdown begin. the ultimate selfie. Thanks for all the memories and congratulations. Now since 1932, the university has presented medals to the graduating seniors with the most distinguished academic records at the university. One medal is awarded to a student who's completed at least three quarters of his or her degree requirements at the university and one is awarded to a student who entered the university with at least 60 transfer credits from a Washington Community College. The first recipient of this year's President's Medal is Emma Josephine Spickard. <laughs> Emma, will you please come forward? Okay, you get to stand here and embarrass you a little bit. Emma's undergraduate career was notable not only for her academic excellence, but also for her public service. On campus, she served as a campus tour guide, an orientation leader with first year programs, and a peer mentor for the honors program. She did service learning at the Elizabeth Gregory Holmes Women's Day Shelter and interned with the Real Change Homeless Empowerment Project. She also worked with the student group Globe Med, which partners with an organization in Kenya to improve access to health, education, and food security. Upon graduation, Emma will travel to South America and Southeast Asia on a Bonderman Fellowship before returning to school to pursue a Juris Doctor degree and a Master's of Public Health or a Master's in Public Policy. She's graduating summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Public Health and Global Health. Emma, it's my great pleasure to present you with this medal in recognition of your outstanding achievement. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I told you our graduates were pretty special, and here is another one. The recipient of the President's Medal for the student who entered the University of Washington from a Washington community college is Marissa De Lucia. Marissa came to the US, yes, okay, she's got some family, friends. Marissa came to the US, came to us from Seattle Central College. And as I mentioned earlier, we're honored to have with us today the president of that college, our dear friend and alum, Dr. Sheila Edwards Lang. Will you both join me at the lectern? When she entered the university, Marissa took full advantage of the opportunities offered by our Environmental Science and Terrestrial Resource Management Program. Through a combination of scholarships and grants, she was able to conduct independent research on the remediation of wastewaters in Costa Rica. She also volunteered in the UW's Disturbance Ecology Lab on plant pathology, pollinator ecology, and insect population dynamics, and recently accepted a summer position as a full-time undergraduate researcher in the lab. She currently works with the Pacific Northwest Invasive Plant Council, where she organizes free invasive plant, invasive plant identification and reporting workshops with governmental organizations across Washington and Oregon. Marissa also volunteered with TRIO Student Support Services, which assists low-income students and students with disabilities. She's graduating summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science and Terrestrial Resource Management. Marissa, it's my great pleasure to present you this medal in recognition of your outstanding achievements. Sheila, will you join me?
I would also like to recognize those students who are graduating today with the university's highest bachelor's honors, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude. Their names are listed on page 15 of the commencement program. Now, student government is a very important component of the governance of this institution, and its leadership is called on regularly to represent student views on a wide range of issues at the university. I'm pleased to introduce to you now the president of the Associated Students of the University of Washington, Ratika Jane, and the president of the Graduate and Professional Student Senate, Juliana Conti. Hello, class of 2019, and congratulations. My name is Ratika Jane, and for the past year, I've had the pleasure of serving as your student body president. But not for much longer. At the end of the ceremony is when my term is over, so I guess this is me putting in my two minutes notice. For my last act as president, I wanted to do something big, like get everyone a dog, or put two-ply toilet paper in every university bathroom, or, I don't know, pay off everyone's student debt? I was gonna go with that last one, uh, but then someone in Georgia did it first and it didn't seem as impressive. For the past four years, that feeling of having to do something big and important and impressive has hovered over our heads, pushing us to do more, sometimes because we could and sometimes because we just didn't wanna be left behind. And now, look around. You made it. I know it wasn't easy, for any of you. Every single one of you has fought against your own barriers, burdens, and doubts. And regardless of where you come from or where you're going, you're with us here now. And that is the biggest and most impressive thing of all. You should be proud of yourselves. We've survived the greatest days and the longest nights. We've discovered sources of strength and resilience that we didn't know were in us. And now that we know what we're capable, what are we gonna do with it? Outside of these walls, the world is facing its greatest day, its longest night, and it's not doing so well. Every day, rights are revoked, massacres are hidden, and we're expected to just let it happen. But that's not how we were taught. That's not what Huskies do. So, don't. Some of us are starting new jobs on Monday. Some of us are starting new lives across the country and the world. Some of us are still figuring it out. All of that is amazing. But whatever you do from now on, it matters. It matters so much. So make it big, make it impressive, make it matter. It's been a pleasure to serve you, and it'll be a pleasure to see how you guys serve the world. Hey, grad students. <laughs> when I finished my undergrad, I was frustrated that congratulations came with the consolation that those four college years will have been the best of my life. As if moving back in with my parents, not having a job yet, and repeatedly having to explain a degree in music wasn't enough. Now I was expected to mourn the end of my youth and freedom. Yeah, super, super inspiring. So I went and I worked for the next five years, believing that they were right that everything was just downhill from there. But I'm really glad that they were so wrong. I meet graduate and professional students every day as a student leader. These people are incredible. These grad student caregivers, volunteers, scientists, artists, theorists, practitioners, and humanitarians have worked tirelessly to achieve a goal that they set years ago when they applied to the University of Washington not just for themselves, but for their families and their communities. So far, grad school has been the best years of my life because of you all, all of you right here. You hold me and everyone else accountable to higher standards of what it means to be a good person and to set higher goals. So grad students know this, society is lucky to have you. Your tenacity, your passion, 
your boundary pushing, break the mold and question everything philosophy has manifested into actionable skill which will change the world and the lives of those around you. I believe that people often underestimate how comparable a graduate student mind is to a professional athlete. You are brilliant. And the University of Washington has been incredibly lucky to have you as the backbone of our community. My hope is that as you transition out of your grad student experience and into your next chapter, that you will carry with you the open-mindedness and passion that brought you here in the first place, and that you will continue to always have the best years of your lives because you will demand for yourself the same standards of community, innovation, and boundless knowledge that you found here. I am so proud of what you've accomplished, and I am so excited to see what you're going to do next. Congratulations. That's what you call powerful student leadership. All right. Okay. Sorry. The wind feels good, but it kind of got me a little bit off balance. Here we go. We are honored to have as our commencement speaker today an alumnus of the university who has forever changed the world of professional sports with his historic accomplishments and his advocacy for diversity and inclusion in the sports industry and in society. A Seattle native, he's president and chief operating officer of the four-time National Basketball Association champion Golden State Warriors. See, a W and a recent inductee into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Over a career that began decades ago as a ball boy for our beloved Seattle Supersonics, he's risen to the highest echelons of management in the National Basketball Association, and he's made an indelible mark on the sports world. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Mr. Rick Welts. Thank you, President Kause. I think uh, when you called me in January, uh, I said to you on the phone, uh, I, don't, I could count on one hand the number of times I've actually had chills during a phone call. So thank you. Uh, I have to tell you how much it means to me to be here in this stadium today. I think the course of my life was set right here. From the time I could walk, my father was bringing me to Husky games here in the stadium. Uh, by the time I was at Queen Anne High School, I was racing down to the ticket office to buy a $3 ticket to sit in the bleachers right over there. And I think I knew what I wanted to be. Sonny Six Killer, right? But in 1970, I think everybody wanted to be Sonny Six Killer. Graduates, congratulations. It's been a long journey and you've made it. You have so much to be proud of. But I'll bet I know how some of you feel. You're standing here on the verge of a major change in your life. You're not exactly sure what's gonna happen next. And you're wondering, did I make the right choices? Did I pick the right courses? The right field of study? Did I choose a career path that'll guide me for the rest of my life? And the short answer, probably not. You're here with a lot of alumni today. I think you ought to take the opportunity to say, what, were you, what did you think when you graduated? What did you think when you left college? What are you actually doing now? I came to the UW during Watergate, and I was hoping to save the world through my journalism. Uh, as difficult as it might be to imagine today, at that point in time, journalists were heroes. I thought for sure journalism would be my career. But when I was 16 years old, on a lucky break, I landed a job as a ball boy for my Supersonics. And when I started school here, I had a part-time job with the Sonics. Little did I know that I would end up working for the Sonics full-time, or end up having a career that would include four NBA championships, 
two WNBA championships, and an induction into the Basketball Hall of Fame. There's no way I could have possibly imagined that when my time at Washington was ending. So whatever you've imagined your career will be today, I guarantee you, you will be wonderfully challenged, you'll be buffeted, you'll be turned upside down and inside out before, if you're lucky, you find that passion that excites you every day of your life. One thing I would say is take chances. And I don't mean parachuting or cliff diving. I mean take a chance on yourself when opportunity presents itself. Because I bet you'll find as you go through your career in life, there's one voice that's telling you you aren't qualified for a job or a new opportunity, that you don't have the skills, that you shouldn't speak up, that it's just too much to take on. And that voice most likely will be your own. You worry you don't meet the requirements, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough. To which I say, how do you know unless you try? Give yourself permission to surprise yourself. Take a chance, give it a try, you'll amaze yourself. Now this next part has a little story with it. It concerns a time a young woman invited her grandmother over to her house for a cup of coffee. When her grandma got there, her granddaughter was in a real state. Her beloved cat had climbed a tree, it was 30 feet up in the air. She didn't know what to do, call 911, call the fire department. And her wise grandma put her hand on her shoulder and looked her in the eye. Honey. Have you ever seen a cat skeleton in a tree? You haven't. That's because they don't die up there. Somehow they figure out a way to get themselves down. And that's gonna be you. Until now you've had a lot of help from teachers, mentors, family, and if you haven't already, I hope you're using this weekend to say thank you and tell them how much you appreciate them. But there are going to be problems ahead. Not one day, okay, glad we got that worked out kind of problems. There will be difficult, persistent problems that may not have a good or easy answer. And you're not gonna be able to ask someone else to step in and fix them. You're gonna to have to work them through. You're gonna to have to get yourself out of that tree. I know because I spent the majority of my personal life in that tree. I had a secret. I was different. But my difference wasn't one that showed. It wasn't the color of my skin or my gender. It wasn't the God I worshiped or the language I spoke. I'm gay. And in keeping my secret, I don't usually get applause for that. It's nice. <laughs> and in keeping my secret and staying in that tree, I was prepared to make whatever personal sacrifices I had to make to make sure I could have a career in sports, and to make sure that the people I cared about the most still loved me. I was good at it, or at least I thought I was. Not once in my entire career did someone ask me if I was gay. At work, I managed to construct a fence around my personal life. People I worked with respected my boundaries. I didn't ask about who they socialized with last weekend, so they didn't ask me. I never acted differently at work. I never lied. But I was never completely honest, was I? Eventually, I reached a crossro crossroads. Uh, my father had passed away. My mother had been diagnosed with lung cancer. I had a relationship breakup in large measure because I couldn't bring the most important, important person in my life into my work environment. I was ready to get out of that tree. It was time, but how? I asked a friend, a New York City media guru, to meet me for dinner in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. The scene is going to look great in the movie. A snowy night, a table by the window. I told Dan I needed some help to put my story in context. I could privately share the fact that I was gay with the people I worked with and be completely at peace with myself. But I asked Dan if he thought there was something more that could be accomplished if I came out in a more public way. He looked across the table at me and he said, Ricky, he always calls me Ricky, if you're willing to do this, I want to help, and I think it's page A1, New York Times. That was my oh shit moment, really. <laughs> that Dan, Dan Clorist, introduced me to another Dan, Dan Barry, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning writer, and it turns out he was right. My story landed right there on the front page of the New York Times. It took me a long time to get out of that tree, but when I did, 
It was an overwhelmingly positive experience. It's given me a platform to talk about equality, talk about diversity and inclusion. Especially in a profession, men's sports, that lags our society at large on those subjects. You're gonna inevitably find yourself stuck in your own unique tree. And you know what? You two are gonna figure out how to get yourself down. When my story was published in 2011, there's no way anyone could have imagined the pace of social change that would unfold around the issues of sexual orientation and gender equity in the next few short years. In 2015, the Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage, unimaginable a few years before. My partner Todd and I were invited to President Obama's White House Pride celebration in the last year of his office in 2016. In his speech that day, it was his warning that I remember most. While he cheered all the progress that had been made, he said, it's not inevitable though. History doesn't just travel forward, it also travels backward. Three days later, the Pulse nightclub shooting took place in Orlando, killing 49 people. History does not just travel forward. In our world today, there are many trying to push us backward. Creating conflict between groups of people is now political strategy. Please, be among those who want to keep our focus on traveling forward. I've always been especially intrigued by people different than me. Thank you. I'm pretty sure I've never learned anything when I was talking. And only occasionally do I learn something when conversing with people just like me. Diversity in your life and career as richness and texture. You can't experience by reading the same blogger or watching the cable news channel, the same one every day. In business, diversity and inclusion may be a social strategy, but it's definitely a success strategy. Engaging people with different backgrounds and different experiences and truly valuing their ideas results in better decision making, period, guaranteed. Embrace it because of how it enriches you as a person and embrace it because it brings you success in your career. In my mid-20s, my mother was helping me wallpaper a new apartment in the Magnolia neighborhood. She started asking me questions like, are you having trouble meeting girls? By afternoon's end, I told her what she already knew, that I was gay, and we cried and hugged. And the next day, mom and dad both came over, and we cried and hugged. And then my mom said, I don't know why you thought it was such a big deal. You know your Uncle Bob is gay. And I said, Uncle Bob is gay? <laughs> Uncle Bob was my dad's brother, a doctor, a world traveler, smart, funny, and our absolutely favorite relative. Wow, wouldn't that have been good information for me to have? And that's really how I think about my decision about coming out. If my small gesture could make some young boy or girl feel they weren't alone, and they could, could succeed because of who they are, not in spite of who they are, it'll all be worthwhile. Maybe for some young boy or girl out there, I could be that person that I never had. Of the thousands of emails I received at that time from parents, from people I'd met in my life, from total strangers, the ones that touched me the most were the ones from kids who just wanted to reach out and connect with somebody who might understand what they were going through. And now, thanks for being here today. I can not only tell them that people will accept them for who they are, but you might even get invited back to your alma mater to give a commencement speech. For me, coming out will be the most important thing that I ever do. And that is the real quest, isn't it? Not just to find your career path or your life's profession. You're really only looking for one thing. Find the most important thing you will ever do, and then go out and do it. Thank you. Good luck. Go Huskies.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to present the various degrees to all candidates. Degrees will be conferred by the Chair of the Board of Regents, Dr. Constance W. Rice. The audience is requested to remain in their seats until the conclusion of today's ceremony. Candidates for doctoral degrees will be presented by the several deans. For the School of Medicine, Associate Dean Ray Meistas. Okay, okay. I'm, hopefully we'll get somebody to hold off the students so they don't mob me. Can I go? Or, okay, you just, great. Yeah. Yeah, will you hand me Good your afternoon. Card? Yeah. Okay. It's an honor to recommend the 250 graduate candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. Many of these graduates have proceeded to graduate training programs throughout the country. Those participating in today's ceremony will come forward with the other doctoral candidates. No, she's not. She's going to give me the... Interim Dean Gary Kyoto, School okay, of Dentistry. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to present the candidates for Doctor of Dental Surgery. These candidates were honored previously in separate ceremonies. The present candidates will please come forward with the other doctoral candidates. Tony Remby Dean Mario L. Barnes, School of Law. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Faculty of Law, I have the great honor of presenting 159 candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor. Law candidates participating in the ceremonies will please come forward with the other doctoral candidates. Dean Sean Sullivan, School of Pharmacy. Good afternoon. It is my honor to present the 85 candidates for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. These candidates will please come forward with the other doctoral candidates. Interim Dean Rebecca Anarud of the Graduate School. Hello. Here with us today are the candidates who have completed all requirements for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy Education, Musical Arts, Physical Therapy, Audiology, and Nursing Practice. On behalf of the deans of these schools and colleges and the graduate faculty, I am pleased and honored to recommend these candidates for the highest degrees awarded by the university. Will all doctoral degree candidates from all schools please rise? It is my distinct pleasure to present you, Regent Rice, all of the doctoral degree candidates from the various schools and colleges. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the faculties of the respective schools, I am pleased to confer upon these candidates their respective doctoral degrees. Congratulations. You have achieved high academic distinction, and this university salutes you. You will be presented today with memento of this graduation exercise. Please come forward. No. Lori Capello, Doctor of Musical Arts in Choral Conducting, degree awarded posthumously. Gabrielle Dorfman Hopkins, Mathematics. Denise Taniel Yukasoy, Materials Science and Engineering. Audrey Claire Rogsak, Biology. Ryan Hufschmid, Materials Science and Engineering and Nanotech and Molecular Engineering. Justin Nicholas Fernando, Pharmacy. 
Neha Ahuja, Dental Surgery. Daniel Yu, Political Science. Bryce Jeffrey Plantick, Dental Surgery. Jagori Saha, Economics. Jason Jeffrey Colt, Bioengineering. Roy Su, Psychology. Doctor. <laughs> Jose Ceballos, Psychology. Yuting Lin, Nursing. Hao Wang, Environmental Health and Toxology. Miriam Packard, Learning Sciences and Human Development. Christine Elizabeth Liebrand, Sociology. Abebe Fenta Balete, Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner. Rosanna Colon Tijet, Molecular and Cellular Biology. Anne Song, Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner. Carolyn G. Saha, Physics. Andrew Pettit, Family Nurse Practitioner. Lije Tongu, Molecular and Cellular Biology. Siri Sherman Geary, Family Nurse Practitioner. John Eric Rutherford, Music Voice. Hannah Be, Family Nurse Practitioner. Alfred Osati, Epidemiology. Julia Lynn Case, Family Nurse Practitioner. Irene Jonguda, Epidemiology. Jenna Kritzinger, Family Nurse Practitioner. Ahmed Aladon, Biomedical and Health Informatics. Lauren Elise Berglund, Family Nurse Practitioner. Shefali Haldar, Biomedical Health and Informatics. Andrea Guzinski, Nurse Midwife. Ross J. Lorden, Biomedical and Health Informatics. Anna Sarina Moniz Butak, Adult Gerontology Acute Care Nurse Practitioner. Ulil Amri, Anthropology Social Cultural. Joshua Snavely, Adult Gerontology Acute Care Nurse Practitioner. Graham Joseph Pruce, Anthropology. Sumeya Werfali, Oral Health Sciences. Iris Lance, Education Curriculum and Instruction. Heba Ahmed Almula, Nursing. Tsung Chen Lu, Biomedical and Health Informatics. Caitlin Jean Cheryl Lothorpe, Juris Doctor. Andres Maurizio Sanchez Jaba, Economics. Bowen Lee, Bioengineering. Guillermo Gallagher, Economics. Miriam Elizabeth Hacker, Civil Engineering. Tigran Juvudian, Epidemiology. Lee Allison, Civil Engineering. Luke A. Kippenpock, Physics. Ty Youngblood, Bioengineering. Jackie Pratt, English. Yan Bo Chi, Chemical Engineering, Data Science. Jennifer Liu, Asian Language and Literature. Yi Ting Li, Chemical Engineering. Marwa Muhammad Matiad, Near and East Middle Eastern Studies. Eric J. Liu, Chemical Engineering. Matthew Adeza, Communication. Sung Bum Li, Chemical Engineering. Gregory L. Diggs, Education Curriculum and Instruction. Kyle Medley, Bioengineering. Roxana Chiapa Barros, Education, Peter Leadership Kim. and Policy. Peter Kim, Bioengineering. David Phelps, Education Learning and Human Development. Han Gyu Kim, Civil Engineering. Jeanette Marie James, Education Leadership and Policy Studies. Kelsey Jane Hirsch, Nursing. Dorothy Ann Alyssa Harris, Pharmacology. Huang Gao Wang Zarun, Nursing. Carl D. Jablonski, Biomedical and Health Informatics. Intira Rupsawang, Nursing. Catherine Margaret King, Hispanic Studies. Fege Shibele, Nursing. Connor Clark, Classics. Ana Carolina Sauer Liberato, Nursing, Statistics. Peter Bo B. Lin, Mathematics. Niall R. Wilson, Bioengineering. Menar Richman, Mathematics. Dara Farrell, Mechanical Engineering. Kevin Y. Loy, Mathematics. Rishi Pahuja, Mechanical Engineering. Geraldo Celaya Ufemia, Mathematics. Karen Harban, Mechanical Engineering. Sean Reese McCurdy, Mathematics. Fahim Ur Rahman, Electrical Engineering. Ji Yue Huang, 
Atmospheric Sciences. Eric M. Pedersen, Bioengineering. Ponampai Narek Pitak, Atmospheric Sciences. Alicia Placo, Family Nurse Practitioner. Marisa Lagu, Atmospheric Sciences. Heather McKinney, Adult Gerontology Acute Care Nurse Practitioner. Joseph P. Zagrodnik, Atmospheric Sciences. Francesco Roberto De Leo, Aeronautics and Astronautics. Marie Suzanne Salmi, Oceanography. O Sazonamen Igbi Nosun, Aeronautics and Astronautics and Astrobiology. Julia Nguyen, Chemistry. Keon Verine, Aeronautics and Astronautics. Shushan He, Chemistry. Gustavo Camarinha Fujiwara, Aeronautics and Astronautics. Su Ni Tan, Chemistry. Milan Stefanovic, Aeronautics and Astronautics. Yu A Liu, Built Environment. Jake Dean Quinzer, Aeronautics and Astronautics. Chung Ti Tu Ho, Built Environment. Shadi Aslabar, Electrical Engineering. Barbara X. Rodriguez Droguet, Built Environment. Hua Zung Deng, Electrical Engineering. Lu Ming Shang, Built Environment. Alexander Tong Hong, Electrical Engineering. Hong Bin Liu, Chemistry. Adarsh Rajagopal, Material Science and Engineering. Jing Yi Ren, Economics. Ting Zhao, Material Science and Engineering. Ding Zhang, Physics. Chu, PhD in Chemistry. Mark Chof Manalong Torres, Medicine. Daniel Gomez Hernandez, Aquatic and Fishery Sciences. Tyson Troy Dudley, Pharmacy. Anna Marie Chang, Oral Health Sciences. Emily Hall, History. Shatha Bashamus, Oral Health Sciences. Michael D. Aguira, History. Abir Al Maimouni, Electrical Engineering. Ryan Archibald, History. Ahmad Miliani, Electrical Engineering. Stephen F. Danielson, Choral Conducting. Ignacio Agustin Cano, Computer Science and Engineering. Elizabeth Churland, Choral Conducting. Naveen Kumar Sharma, Computer Science and Engineering. Gemma Godai Diaz Corelho, Woodwinds. Jialin Li, Computer Science and Engineering. Li Cheng Hung, Piano. Adriana Shakeres, Computer Science and Engineering. Wyatt D. Smith, Musical Arts. Winbo Ju, Civil Engineering. Daniel Ross Venneberg, Musical Arts. Xingwei Wu, Civil Engineering. Douglas J. Morin, Instrumental Conducting. Zhong Di Chu, Bioengineering. Shana Stahl, Instrumental Conducting. Yuan Dong Li, Bioengineering. Corey Meals, Music Education. Zhong Li, Bioengineering. Hao Zheng, Earth and Space Sciences. Saumya Vashist, Aeronautics and Astronautics. Xiong Bin Stephen Li, Genome Sciences. Wan Li, Civil Engineering. Mandy Li Macklin, English. Si Fang Chen, Physics. Samantha Joan Chisholm, Physical Therapy. Pereshte Sadegi, Computer Science and Engineering. Nicole Victoria Jimenez, Physical Therapy. Chue Gong, Industrial Engineering. Eli Dascalos, Physical Therapy. Rami Gawida, Pharmacy. Elizabeth Vogt, Physical Therapy. Elsa Negash, Family Nurse Practitioner. Nicholas Howell, Physical Therapy. Ingrid Draney, Family Nurse Practitioner. Daniel Goldfein, Physical Therapy. Jessica Mao, Family Nurse Practitioner. Francesca Lahoz, Physical Therapy. Lisa Bindas, Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner. Troy Nathan Thomas, Physical Therapy. Jane Wang Kuyo, Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner. Madeline Christine McCullough, Physical Therapy. Shi Jin, PhD. Arthur Dion Biggers Herbert, Physical Therapy. Hao Fang, Electrical Engineering. Christopher K. Villarosa, Physical Therapy. Xing Yi Shi, Electrical Engineering. Diego Adrian Gell, Physical Therapy. Ai Li Wang, Electrical Engineering. 
Megan A. C. Svegar, Physical Therapy. Jung Tang, Electrical Engineering. Jonathan Abarka Nava, Physical Therapy. Sung Wei Huang, Electrical Engineering. Tan Tao Dong Chuang, Physical Therapy. Bakari Marong, Adult Gerontology Acute Care Nurse Practitioner. Carolyn Ko, Physical Therapy. Usman Jete, Adult Gerontology Acute Care Nurse Practitioner. Eileen Isakarova Wexler, Physical Therapy. Brissetta Simmons, Adult Gerontology Primary Care Nurse Practitioner. Lauren Hickey, Physical Therapy. Leslie Marie Barsena, Adult Gerontology Primary Care Acute Nurse Practitioner. Rachel Jean Morin, Physical Therapy. Catherine Felicia Edstrom, Adult Gerontology Primary Care Nurse Practitioner. Dan Zhu, English. Omar Sain, Adult Gerontology Primary Care Nurse Practitioner. Pei Jung Huang, Piano. Yi Chin, Physics. Mohammed Ibrahim Ta Arbabian, Ta Business Administration. Tamuka M. Chido Saki, Biochemistry. Nathaniel McVicker, Electrical Engineering. James Benson Worth, English. Mingyu Kang, Urban Design and Planning. Eden D. McCord, Pharmacology. Sung Yun Park, Nursing, Statistics. Kyle Morgan, Physics. Raul Pedro Flores Odiber, Civil Engineering. Miu Yang Chen, International Studies. Roxanne Carini, Civil Engineering. Deep Paul, International Studies. Mary Carmen Andrea Jose Guerra Perez, Civil Engineering. Subash Prajapati, Ethnomusicology. Jin Wan Jung, Mechanical Engineering. Pa Nin Peterson, Epidemiology. Yi Fei Guan, Mechanical Engineering. Tiffany D. Pan, Anthropology. Jennifer Mark, Epidemiology. Stephen G. Lotzenheiser, Anthropology Biological. Julie Doe, Medicine. Jessica Lozano, Anthropology, Social Cultural. Ruzbe Davuti, Civil Engineering. Heather F. Fishley, Audiology. Mukta Singh, Dental Surgery. Alice Kwong, Audiology. Ashwarga Patil, Dental Surgery. Emma B. Peel, Audiology. Jonathan Jingyung Choi, Dental Surgery. Gina S. Hon, Audiology. Wei Wei Zhu, Mechanical Engineering. Brittany V. Medina, Audiology. Stephen P. Giannakis, Audiology. Sheridan E. Frank, Audiology. Roxana Masudnia, Audiology. Carol Jean Crandall, Environmental and Forest Sciences. Jason Yu Ofodile, Physical Therapy. Mingwei Tang, Statistics. Mingjie Pan, Statistics. Chao Yu Yu, Public Health Biostatistics. Ya Xiang Xi, Public Health Biostatistics. Rui Zhuang, Public Health Biostatistics. Ang Chi Cheng, Public Health Biostatistics. Junjie Yan, Electrical Engineering. Daniel S. Feinberg, Environmental and Forest Studies. Janine Ting Chong, Chongning, Education, Learning Sciences. Nilanjana Laha, Statistics. Yolanda Valencia, Geography.
Candidates for master's degrees will be presented by Associate Dean Mark Long of the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance and Interim Dean Anarud of the Graduate School. Candidates for master's degree in the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance will please rise. I am honored to present these candidates to receive the respective master's degrees. Candidates will please remain standing. On behalf of the deans of schools and colleges of the graduate and the graduate faculty, I am honored to present these candidates to receive their respective master's degrees. Regent Rice, it is my distinct honor to present you all of the master's degree candidates from the various schools and colleges. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the graduate faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each of you your master's degree. Congratulations. You will be presented today with a memento of this graduation exercise. Please come forward.
Candidates for bachelor's degrees. 
in the various colleges and schools of the university will be presented by the several deans. The candidates who have been accepted by the general faculty of the university for their respective degrees are listed in the commencement program. For the College of Arts and Sciences, Dean Robert Stacy. Candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences will please rise. I love that moment. It is my honor to present these candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean Mia Tuan, College of Education. The candidates from the College of Education will please rise. I am proud to present these candidates for Bachelor of Arts degrees in Early Childhood and Family Studies and Education, Community and Organizations and to recommend that they be awarded their degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean Michael Bragg, College of Engineering. Will the candidates from the College of Engineering please rise? I am pleased to present these candidates of the College of Engineering for the degrees of Bachelors of Science, Bachelors of Science in Engineering, Bachelors of Science in Aeronautical and Astronautical Engineering, Bioengineering, Chemical Engineering, Civil and Environmental Engineering, Computer Engineering, Computer Science, electrical engineering, human-centered design and engineering, industrial and systems engineering, material science and engineering, and mechanical engineering, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Candidates, will you please be seated? Dean Lisa Gromlich, College of the Environment. The candidates from the College of the Environment will please rise. It is my pleasure and honor to present these candidates of the College of the Environment for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Forest Resources, and Bachelor of Science in Aquatic and Fishery Sciences, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean Anind Day of the Information School. Would candidates from the Information School please rise? It gives me great pleasure to present the candidates of the Information School and future information leaders of the world for the degree of Bachelors of Science in Informatics and to recommend that they be awarded their bachelor's degrees. Candidates, please be seated. Dean James Jimbalvo, Michael G. Foster School of Business. The candidates from the Michael G. Foster School of Business will please rise. It is with much pleasure that I present these candidates for bachelor's degrees in the Foster School and recommend that they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Associate Dean Ann Hirsch, School of Nursing. Degree candidates from the number one public graduate nursing school in the nation will please rise. It is my pleasure and honor to present these candidates to the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing and recommend that they be awarded their bachelor's degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Associate Dean Ray Meistas, School of Medicine. Will the bachelor candidates from the School of Medicine please rise? 
It's a privilege to present these bachelor candidates from the School of Medicine in the specialized fields of clinical health services, medical laboratory science, medical technology, and physician assistant to recommend and to recommend that they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean Renee Cheng, College of Built Environments. Will the candidates from the College of Built Environments please rise? It is an honor and a privilege to present the candidates that will be leading the built environments of our future for bachelor's degrees in architecture, landscape architecture, construction management, and community and environmental planning, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Candidates, please be seated. Associate Dean Tessa Evans Campbell, School of Social Work. Will the candidates from the School of Social Work please rise? On behalf of the Social Work faculty, it is my great privilege to present these candidates for their bachelor's degree in social welfare and to recommend that they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Candidates, please be seated. Dean Hillary Godwin, School of Public Health. <laughs> the candidates from the School of Public Health will please rise. <laughs> it is with much pleasure that I present these candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Public Health and recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Candidates will please be seated. All bachelor candidates from all schools and colleges just presented will please rise. Following Regent Rice's citation awarding the various bachelor's degrees, candidates will be seated immediately and under direction of the faculty marshals will await their turn to come forward one row at a time. It is my distinct honor and privilege to present to you, Regent Rice, all of the bachelor's degree candidates from the various schools and colleges. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the faculty of the university, I am pleased to confer upon each of you your bachelor's degree. Congratulations. You will be presented today with the memento of this graduation exercise. Please come forward as directed by the marshals.
The University of Washington Glee Club, under the direction of Alonzo Brizuela, will now lead us in the singing of Rise Up With Pride for Washington. The words to the song are printed on the inside of the back cover of the commencement program. The audience will please rise. The audience and members of the graduating class are requested to remain at their seats until the recessional of the faculty is concluded. Once the stage party has left the stadium, graduates may exit the field via the stairs at the west end of the stadium or to the east as you entered. Please remain at your seats until the recessional is over. The 144th commencement exercises of the University of Washington are now closed. Thank <laughs> you.